we are back again on Fifi Manfred on YouTube. Um, in the last two videos of Chelsea's um, alchemy of a uh, midfield, technically and of course tactically, and then box to box in terms of the balance of that Chelsea midfield, um, has is in there. If you've not seen it, you have to go back. To, it's, it's just the last video I uploaded before this. Um, apart from that, there was that take about where Chelsea really are um, in that midfield, and then the issues of Chelsea's new sponsorship. But my name again is Fifi Manfred. This is Fifi Manfred on YouTube. Um, I'm grateful to be here. I'm grateful for your time and your attention. But today, there's a lot more to talk about. Chelsea's teams, Chelsea's players on the international break. What's happening with them? First of them, Nani Madweke. Secondly, Cole Palmer. What's the injury situation with Cole Palmer? There's Axel de Sassi who pulled out of the French squad. Riz James is said to have been recovering. And he's in line to play against Arsenal all over the weekend. Then after that, there's that conversation that's... It's not Chelsea conversation, but this is a football channel, not just a Chelsea channel. It's the issue of the Glazers and why they've not sold their club, Manchester United, to um, Sheikh Jassim. And it looks as if Serge Mraisklip is going to get a 25% of Manchester United in that bit. So yeah, thank you very much. If you've not subscribed, guys, just do all to subscribe. If you've not subscribed, subscribe. Turn on the notification button and do choose all. My name is Sifu Manfred. See you. So yeah, um, like I said in the previous video, Chelsea have played very well against Fulham, against Burnley in the last two games that they've played. They've gotten a maximum point. But boy, the biggest test yet is yet to come for Chelsea. And it is Arsenal going away to come and play at the Stamford Bridge against Chelsea. Chelsea seem to be soft, to be struggling against Arsenal anytime they come to play there. The last time um, this happened, there was... Graham Porter was in charge of Chelsea Football Club. Arsenal came to Stamford Bridge and got a job done against Chelsea. It's a worrying trend, actually. But seriously, there are frailties in the Arsenal team as well. There are worries in the Arsenal team. And, and if you allow me to tactically analyse that squad, I'll tell you some worries. In fact, the biggest worry of that Arsenal team is the lack of a ball carrier. I mean, yes, Riz, Declan Rice is a brilliant midfielder. Same for Thomas Tepate, same for Odegaard, same for even Kai Havertz, um, depending on how you look at it. As, as 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 an outlet for them, he is brilliant. But really, there, there is a lack of a hold up and a carrier in the middle of the park for Arsenal Football Club. Yes, small meters fine, but essentially for longer distances, Arsenal do not have that hold up threat, that that, that ball carrying threat that you want in midfield. And those are some of the issues. But really, they've had good performances against Chelsea in recent times. They've been able to beat Chelsea there. So the bigger test is yet to come now. Essentially, first of all, in terms of the injury update over there, um, Axel de Sassi this morning, we had a report from Cobham. Um, when we did our checks here, it shows that Axel de Sassi's injury is not so bad as feared. It's not so bad as feared, actually. It's not so bad as feared. And it means that over the weekend, he'll be fit and in line to start. Yes, Axel de Sassi has been an integral part of that Chelsea centre-back um, defence role since the um, injury of Wesley Fofana. He was bought because at that point in time, Chelsea needed another right-footed centre-back and Axel de Sassi was in there. The best days of Axel de Sassi was essentially when he was at Monaco with Badia, Benoit Badia, Schiele. Both of them were brilliant at the back for Monaco and Leonardo Jardim. They were top-notch. And I think that even with time, a lot of Chelsea fans are beginning to appreciate more Axel de Sassi and what it brings to the team. Essentially, I think what I didn't really see when I scouted him was the was 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 his cross field passes those diagonal passes cross for 20 30 yada from Chelsea's own half to the opponent's half usually to the wingers in this case either of Mihailo Modric or Raheem Sterling or even Cole Palmer so that, that's essentially what he gives Chelsea also he's a dual monster in fact in terms of the top five best duelists in the English Premier League as it stands now aerial and ground duels he is up there in terms of centre back. So he's he's a dual monster. He goes into duels, he wins them. He makes it very, very difficult for anybody to win those duels against him. His ball winning ability is also very good. His aerial threat in the box in terms of defending or set piece is very important. So Chelsea really were racing against time to get him fit. The report is that he is fit and he is possibly going to play against Arsenal over the weekend for Chelsea Football Club. And it's imperative that Chelsea are able to recover all their players who are injured to be able to play against Arsenal Football Club because really already there's a tall injury list for Chelsea Romeo Lavia and Koko and what's not are all injured and you don't even have extra injured players yes um you look at somebody um 
I'm like Mihailo Modric. He went to play in for, uh, for Ukraine uh, during the international break. He's also fit. Played very well against um, in a game that Ukraine played. He has shown consistently that he keeps on going step by step. Has confidence. His one v one ability. And, and and I think that if you have followed me in terms of my analysis and what I see from players like Mihailo Modric, I'm very much excited about Mihailo Modric because he looks as if he's a player that's going. He's not the kind of player that, that that's giving up. And, and that's what I look out for when attackers when they are young. He needs that experience, needs much more game time. And I think he'll come good. So Axel de Sassi is coming. Mihalo Modric is also good. Um, that injury that he took um earlier on is, seems to have been shrugged off. He's fine. And then most importantly, also, I think that when the England and the 21 were playing, two things were happening. Cole Palmer was captaining the side at some point in time. Um, Noni Madwiki was playing very well. In fact, Noni played brilliantly. One of the goals assisted by Cole, scored two goals, brilliant goals. And uh, in an interview, Noni is saying several, all the right things that essentially he needs to add goals, the easy goals and assist to his game. And I think it's very important. I like the way Mauricio Pontetino has handled Noni Madwiki. He didn't make his issue of indiscipline and insubordination when he was um, supposedly supposed to be injured and was in a bar, in a club, having fun. He didn't make it a big deal. He just dealt with him internally. And I think that is good. Noni himself has said that he has his um, head back on his shoulders and he wants to be patient and play football. Um, so yeah, Noni scored twice in that game. I think that after the international break, Noni is really going to be very important for Chelsea Football Club because of how he's playing his game. How he's playing his game is very, very important. Where he picks the game from, how he picks up those balls from wide areas, his 1v1 threat, and of course his manip manipulation of Pieces. It was a very, very impo important and imperative, using, given what he is. But in that game, actually, there was a time where, um, in the second half, Kupama clutched to his tie and some part of his knee, and he walked off. And people rightly so were saying that Ch Chelsea is cursed. Because why is it that Kupama plays for Manchester City for a very long time? Doesn't get injured. None of a sudden, he plays a couple of games for Chelsea, becomes arguably Chelsea's best player thus far in the last three games making everything tick together in, in, in attack for Chelsea and all of a sudden he gets injured and it was it was really worrying but yesterday there were reports that Cole Palmer possibly is also going to be part of that team to go and play against Arsenal now the England and the 21 manager did say that he doesn't take risks with young players especially if there's a possibility that they are going to be important for their teams in the weekend, in the next weekend. And everybody knows that this weekend, Chelsea um, are going to play against us now. They didn't take any risks with him. He was sent back to Kobam the next day. In fact, he didn't travel to the team um, to Slovakia to go and play the game against Slovakia. He is in Kobam. He has been assessed by the club's medical team. And everybody there seems to have been given their green lights that Cole Palmer is fit to play for Chelsea in that game against Arsenal over the weekend. And of course, finally, is that one Chelsea Football Club good news? So I I've been wondering, actually. Malo Gusto um, was called by the French national team for the first time. Um, yes, he has not had his debut, full debut for Le Bleu of France, but he was called. Proud to his red card, he was one of our best players at right back. Malo Gusto was brilliant for everything that Chelsea were doing from the right hand side, overlapping and the lap. In fact, the balance of a, of a modern day fullback, Malo Gusto did show. And for me, it was what he gave the team in terms of his 1v1 defensive duels without the ball against top well, wingers like Kuro Mutoma. That stood him out, right? Now, when he got a red card, Marco Kreia came into the team and was brilliant in everything that he gave the team on and off the ball so defensively attacking wise coming inverted to play for the team was brilliant now malo gusto is returning marco crea is still there but the breaking news however is that Riz james is fit and ready to play against us now that's the breaking news Riz james is fit and ready to play against us now Riz james is ready and fit ready to play against us now who do you play via mauricio potatino who do you play Will you be patient with Reece James? But in mind, the Reese gives us that attacking threat. He gives Chelsea that attacking threat. Pushing forward, bumping forward, making sure he does a lot of the overload on the right-hand side, overlapping and dilapping the defensive job. If he has fit, a lot of people will be saying going for Reece James. I don't know what you think, but let me hear from you in the comment section. Who do you think? Marla Gusto, Marco Crea, Reece James against Arsenal. 
how are you going to get this job done? And if it's re if Reese is back, do you take the captain's armband from Conor Gallagher and take it to Reese James? Or you want Conor Gallagher to keep the captain's armband for a while now? These are some of the things that you'll be looking at. But, but guys, you know, if you're a Manchester United fan, this is for you. So, report has it that Sheikh Jassim has officially pulled out in his quest to purchase Manchester United. And if you're following my work, I've been saying this for a very long time. The Glazers never said they wanted a total sale of the club. They said, essentially, they wanted some form of investment. They wanted extra capital. They wanted extra know-how um, to be invested in the club from their perspective, from their family perspective. So, it was imperative that they got this step done. Now, Sheikh Jassim from day one, um, through the Qatar Investments Bank, who um, Sheikh Jassim himself is a young top banker in Qatar. His father is has been the head of the Qatar Investments Bank before. He's a brilliant banker. They understand doing deals and getting it down to the latter. So um, everybody knew that they were in a very good position. If it's about capital injection, if it's about money for them to buy. Now, on the other side, there's Sergio Radcliffe, who people accuse him of being a Chelsea fan. People say he's a second season Chelsea fan, a Chelsea ticket holder. Uh, people also say that, yes, he bought OG Sinis and there is nothing to make of OG Sinis since he has been at the helm. So how is he going to get that done? Also, the question is that um, UEFA doesn't allow two or clubs that are owned by one, one entity or one group or one person playing um, a competition together. So how are they going to get that done? How are they going to sort all of those differences? These are things that a lot of Manchester United fans are worrying about. But most importantly, people felt that the money that Sheikh Zashim was going to put into United was very, very important. In fact, this morning, there are multiple reports that there were possibilities that Manchester United and Sheikh Zashim would have bought Kaelin Mbappe, would have gone full throttle for Kaelin and Tony Mbappe um, had their bid seen the light of day. But just by contest, when Manchester United, through Joel and Avam Glazer, Listed Manchester United on the New York Stock Exchange. For me, United's life changed. The life of the club. It did change. Immediately, the club was listed on the New York Stock Exchange. Where, yes, the company had gone public. But in terms of decision-making of the club, nobody else, apart from the Glazer families, wielded that power. And in terms of the terms of how they manage things at United, yes, of course, so, by way of contest, there are Class B shares at United and Class A shares. Class A shares were floated to the general public and people on the board and whatnot. But on the Class B shares, it's strictly owned by the Glazers. And the voting power is essentially more like a veto. There are 10 times voting power for the Class B shares, more than the Class A shares. So, if you take two Class B shares, you have 10 times more voting power than two Class A shares. So essentially on the board, and the class business are also only owned by the Glazers. And there is also another caveat in the way they say that if in any case, Manchester United sells the club, any of the Glazers, sell any of their deals, any of their um, stocks, any part of it to anybody else, until that is changed, if it's an automatic class B shares, it is converted to a class A shares. Class A share. So that's where the question comes in. So why didn't they shake Jasim? They share Jim Radcliffe buy the club. That's so. This is the reason why Sheikh Jasim really wanted to buy the club. The club outright. There was no need for ACA come to inject uh, um, capital into the club when really you have no say technically. So then, why why would you buy the club? So you want to buy a total club, buy both class B class A shares, buy the club. So you become the new Glazers, and then run the club your way. But another question is. Why is that Serge Mretzky is, is interested in buying 25%? It is because he sees that he's going to be giving sporting autonomy over the running of the club. And with time, he believes that amendments can be made with respect to the Glazers. He's going to turn over his money and amendments will be made with time. Once these amendments are made with time, maybe he can change his class A shares into some class B shares. That's exa well, exactly what I've personally believed that says Jim Radcliffe's bid is more tactful than Sheikh Jassim's bid. Sheikh Jassim's bid is, isn't tactful at all. Unless maybe he had some inside information that ended up backfiring or ended up not being exactly true. But you would have thought that he had to be a little bit patient, a little bit careful in knocking off the Glazers. The Glazers were never going to go easy to knock them off. No. In fact, 
um, the club is, is is valued around 3.5 million. They said they wanted 5 million. Sheikh Jasmine took 6 million. At some point, excess of about 7 million. Still. So it tells you where the Glazers are as a people. And, and I'm worried for Manchester United and where they are as a club. It's a club that needs to be developing. But then it, it's still developing. Now the, the voting is going to go on um, on the board. The Glazers are going to have their say. Once that is done, then we'll see from the back. Yeah, this is another edition of Fifi Manfred on YouTube. I'm grateful for the time. I'm glad to always bring you the content, all the analysis and everything that's in. Do not forget to like, subscribe, turn on notification. Do choose all my name. Fifi Manfred, I'll see you again.